Connie Myers here, and I'm so happy to tell you all about the Kick Butt Leadership Conference. To me, what Kick Butt means is when mindfulness meets strength, empowerment, and vision. So we're going to have a kick butt day today because we have some very powerful ladies with us. And my very first is my co-host, Kim White. And I, I got to tell you a little story about Kim. Um, I was going to the Brendan Burchard event and after I had paid my money, um, I was asking myself and kicking myself, why did I just sign up for this? It was going to be more of something I'd already seen for uh, several other people over and I knew that. And I'm rooming with uh, some other ladies I had never met before. I only knew one of the six ladies that we were all sh we were sharing a couple of rooms. And I got there. The whole reason that I was coming <laughs> to Brenda Richard was not for Brenda Richard, but to meet Kim White. And I, I want to tell you, uh, Kim is, she knows how to put fun in business. And I mean, so many times I think we all take things a little too seriously. Um, but Kim, she's very serious about business, mm -hmm. but she approaches it in a really fun way. And she has her own very unique style in leadership. Um, later on, we're going to have Leslie Appleton Young. She is the chief economist for the California Association of Realtors. And following that is a wonderful lady, Dr. Bernice Ledbetter. She is the director for the Center for uh, women in Leadership at Pepperdine University. Paula Vale is a radio host and TV host and certified Reiki master. And then we have Bernice Ross, a very dear friend of mine. She's a best-selling author and trainer. She has uh, she founded the realestatecoach.com and she has an incredible conference she does every single year called Awesome Females in Real Estate. I've been going for seven years and I tell you, it's, I always say it's the only conference I've ever been to that I didn't want to have it be over. And then last but not least is Sarah Sudichan. And she is, uh, she works with Leslie at the California Association of Realtors. Her title, I'm gonna read it because it's quite long. <laughs> Vice President, Industry Relations and Strategic Initiative at the California Association of Realtors. And both her and Leslie have founded something that is going to be taking over the country and is starting out in real estate, but I believe it's gonna pass on to other industries. It's mm -hmm. called Woman Up. So, Kim, welcome, and I'm so Hi. glad that you're here with me. Um, Kim and her, her entourage actually drove all night to get here to Las Vegas yesterday. So, I really, it's an honor to have you here, and you're such a dear friend. Thank so, you. so, first of all, I want you to talk a little bit about your, your childhood and your how you got started. And, and, by the way, she owns an oil company. So, um, let's just give us a little history. Well, I had um, a little bit of a rough upbringing. I, um, I had I had abuse going on. That when I got a little older, I decided to escape that by getting married to someone who I was jumping from the frying pan into the fire. Um, he he did give me beautiful children. You have two children, right? Yes, I have boys. And that was um, that was a lot of what caused me to think outside the box was all of my upbringing, my upbringing of basically survival mode. And um, I don't know how I don't know how much you want me to go into that, but that's that was one of the things that I think it was a very bad thing, but it turned for my good because mm -hmm. it taught me how to think outside the box and how to um, find solutions to problems when there's no solutions to be found on the, you know, on the outside. So, so she likes to be called princess and you can see she's wearing sparkly glasses. <laughs> that is not by, by accident. Um, tell me, tell everybody why you use the word princess as part of your brand. Well, I, I am definitely a princess. There is no doubt of that. And I am self appointed. So if anyone, you know, has any, any native credentials, I have self appointed myself <laughs> a princess, but I think we're, you know, I think we're born into things that the world tries to, to kill in us. I think the world tries to take away who we are. And I was really born a girly girl and a princess and 
that doesn't mean I'm not smart. And that doesn't mean I can't be a great leader. It just is my flavor. My flavor is I like sparkly things and I like girly things and I like my red lipstick. And that's that's part of the um, thing that when I when I came to a certain point in my life, I had to make a decision whether I was going to be myself and be authentic all the way through everything I did or whether I was going to try to fit in with everyone else and be what the norm was. And I don't think I would have made it if I would have picked the norm. <laughs> Um, because I, I am not normal. I, I am, you know, and I don't want to be normal as other people think of it. I don't want to fit in with everyone, um, just so that I fit in. I don't want to stand out like to make a scene or to get attention. It's just being who I am. And, and I'll tell you this, I have on hoopy earrings. That's my favorite. And when I work out, even if I'm all by myself, I have all my hoopy earrings. I mean, it's not about just outside, but it's about being congruent. I'm congruent with who I am, even in business. So I would like you to kind of tell the story about how you got out. How, how old were you when you got out of the abusive relationship? Well, I got married um, as a late teenager and then was married for 13 years. You were married in this relationship for 13 years. Mm -hmm. It just proves that you can get out and be a huge success. Yes. So I would like you to tell the story about how you got out of that relationship and how you got into the oil business. Well, I got a knock on my door late one night and I didn't, um, I wasn't expecting anyone. We lived way out in the middle of nowhere and it was a policeman. And he said, you know, I know what's going on, ma'am. And I need you to tell me. And I, I was scared to death that he knew that he knew no one knew I never told anyone but there were no marks that night thank God that he could do anything about back then the laws were different and I had to press charges if if I wanted something to be done but the problem was I knew if I pressed charges I would be dead and my children would be dead so I wasn't willing to do that and so he told me this profound statement that's carried me over for to this day and he said, ma'am, you don't have to do that anymore. And I had to process that because I'm thinking I didn't have another choice. I didn't know I had another choice. And so after that moment, I started chewing on that and started realizing there are a lot of that in our lives. There are a lot of things that we don't have to do anymore. A lot of things. And so I made a plan and I had to, uh, I had to be very creative because I was out, in, like I said, in the middle of nowhere, it wasn't like we could just walk to town. But it changed, it changed my life to the point that um, I took my children and we ran and we had to hide out. I mean, it was not a glamorous thing. I want to point that out. It was not glamorous. It was definitely um, very volatile domestic violence and very, um, very vulnerable time for us. But one night I was, after we had escaped, I didn't know what we were going to do. I put my children to bed on the floor in the back of a warehouse. And that same statement came back to me that, you know what, I don't have to do that anymore either. I had to figure out a way to, um, and it had to be creative. It had to be creative. But I had to figure out a way to not have my children homeless and be able to provide for us. And so it started another process of going through and figuring out, um, figuring out life. But I didn't have to be broke anymore. I didn't have to be without anymore. It was something that I was not taught. I mean, I was not taught that you could get out of that situation. I was not taught that you don't have to be broke anymore. But it's true. Whatever your that is doesn't have to be that anymore. So, so how did you come to own an oil company? Well, um, the thing about the oil company is I, and this is fast forward. This is fast forward from that place. I got it in my head that I could do anything I wanted to do, but there were things that were limitations. And one of those was education. 
I didn't have a college degree. I didn't have the things that, you know, it takes to go get a job in, in the oil industry. And so I just went about it differently. If you, if you own an oil and gas company, you get to set the rules. And so on my kitchen table, I started with two clients that believed in me and the job that I did for them. And the rest is history, as we say. It, it it just expounded from there that I really was good at it and I really could do a good job for people without having a certificate on my wall. Well, I think one of the things that you had told me also that I think is an important point is that uh, when you had worked in a job and you had seen how other oil companies were taking advantage of their clients and mm -hmm. cheating them out of money and you wanted to do it the right way. Yes. Yes, that, you know, and I don't want to say anything bad about the oil industry because, I mean, I'm obviously oh, there's lots of good out there, but. still in it, but it can be a very cutthroat industry. And there were some very unscrupulous landmen that were basically robbing people of their, um, their money. Investors don't know what to do to find out about, you know, how to, how to make a good investment in the oil field if they're not from the oil field. And mineral owners don't know how to read contracts just because they own minerals. So there was a lot of vulnerable places in the oil field that because I saw some people go in them. And so I um, basically got tutoring because I went to different people to learn and learned on the fast track what to do to, to protect them and to take care of them. And that, that is just that that was what made us different but I still had to go back to that place of being authentic um Miss Connie wanted me to tell the story about going into a room with there are um, 300 people in this room and 299 of them were men and they had on you know black suits and black briefcases and and all of that and I had to make a decision whether I wanted to be one of the guys or whether I wanted to be the princess I really am. And so I showed up in my pink silk suit and my pink briefcase and my pink calculator. And I took a lot of flack. I mean, I took a lot of um, heckling because uh, you're not supposed to be a girl in the oil field. And so, so uh, you talked about how you let them go on and on about things and then you pulled out your notebook. Can you kind of expand on that a little bit? Well, I, the, the story that you're talking about is I went to a negotiation for one of my clients um, and they were trying to take advantage of her. That was the bottom line. They were trying to take advantage of her and they were, they were men and it's not a, like a thing against men at all. It's just they were men in this room and they thought that they had one over on her. And she hired me to come and go with her to this negotiation. Well, I had done the work. I had a notebook and I was loaded for bear. I wasn't going unprepared. And they were telling me, you know, that I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough. And I, they gave me all the things that I could have told myself, you know, our self-talk is terrible, but I was scared. And they said, you know, you, you're not right. We're right. We've been doing this all this time. And they, and I said, well, I might not be right, but let's see, let's see why I think I am right. And I pulled out my notebook and they just about died because it turned out that crazy princess in the room was right about what they were trying to do to my client. And, and we won, we, we won the negotiation ended up being very blessed by that. And, and, it could have been very ugly, but I, I, I think it goes back to what you said, you know, your, your, your core statement is I don't have to do that anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, that throws people off guard. Mm -hmm. So, um, so now you, ha you still have the oil company and you started the, my sexy business team. And um, so now we have a princess that has a company called my sexy business. <laughs> and uh, so us uh, who Kim is and why I love her so much. So tell me why my sexy business. Well, you know, I have been, I've been in some sort of business for 34 years and 
all I have seen really is people bombarding you with hard selling. They just want to, you know, they don't care what happens to you. They just want you to pay them money so that they get their commission or they get their sale. And I don't like that feeling. And so I don't like that feeling for you either. And I believe that sexy, um, which is not a bad word. It's a, it's one of those words that ha was taboo because it was supposed to mean something else, but really sexy is an attractive. You know, I wanted to attract clients and not chase them. I wanted to do such a good job that people wanted to come in and me trying to find, and that's what having a sexy business is all about is being a draw and not, you know, not having to chase down new clients all the time because you did bad business with the last ones. And another part of sexy business is also setting it up with like processes and systems so that you can do what you want. Like I travel all the time. I've been like, I think we've been to 42 states this year with my sexy business. And the thing is, I couldn't do that if my business wasn't sexy. My business has to be able to sustain while I'm while I'm gone and it has to be able to keep paying and do the things that we need a business to do. We're you know, we're not in business. We're in business. So business is to make money. Right. That's the that is a business. So what kind of services uh, and I'll, I'll get to the social media stuff in a bit. Tell tell them about what kind of businesses or what kind of things are inside of your team that you offer? Well, we have, um, um, that's one of my favorites right now. We offer, it's, it's like an entry level price so that people can get in the club and start working towards leaving a job, start working towards building their business to start. It's a starting spot, but we do lots of consulting. We have masterminds that we run all over the world, um, which is just, amazing to me we we go to events and and we're asked to go to like conferences and and events and do workshops and things um we're on three different tours we have different tours that take us different places that that we're there where they're sexy they're they're sexy part of their business that's why she's here <laughs> so um what is your what is your uh facebook uh page they can go to or in your website that they can, you can go to by the way she has all kinds of incredible snippets of video about how to have success out on social media mm -hmm. um, and and how really to have success in business in general and we give a lot of value that's another thing I believe in with a sexy business is don't be afraid to give value don't be afraid to be a leader first before they send you their money because if you're creating value they will they will come and hire you to do things we teach a lot of marketing um, a lot of businesses don't have big marketing budgets and so we teach them how to do things um, I know you're gonna fall out but for free <laughs> on social media because there is some secret sauce to that there's some amazing things that happen Miss Connie's a great example you know she's she's learned to do a lot of marketing things on on Facebook and it that is part of that is part of what's in the club and and the club the easiest way to go to the club is and it's a private group like you have it's, it's a paid group but if you'll go there you can have the first month for free um, and it's my sexy business dot com slash club forward slash club um, and then my page on Facebook is um, Kim White and then my my business page is Kim White, my sexy business team. I can tell you that there's uh, incredible information on the and and the club is well, 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 well worth it. So I've learned an awful lot from Kim, and Kim is going to be joining me for the next couple of days so we can add a little sexiness to uh, <laughs> this uh, this conference. I want it to be a fun and interesting conference. We have. The women that are joining me are just absolutely, I'm so blessed to know these ladies and have mm -hmm. them agree to be a part of this. It was just, I didn't get a single no out of the deal. So thank you so much for everyone. So Kim, um, what would you say is the most important part about being a leader? And what would you say the 
one mindfulness practice that you do um, as a leader that helps you? I think probably one of the biggest things is to be authentic, is to be the real deal. If I if I came to you and I didn't show up sparkly, I'm actually not showing up as I'm in front of me instead of being who I am. And you know, I realize I'm not everybody's flavor, but that's okay. A true leader, you have to be yourself so that people that want to follow you actually get connected to you in a deeper way because you're the real deal. I think that's a huge, I think that's a huge tip, a huge thing to do is to be really be yourself and don't be so afraid of what other people will say. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, th I think that we'll probably, as we go on, we're going to have a lot of good questions. Does anybody have any questions? I can't see whether anybody's got any questions. Yeah, I was trying to see if we had any questions, and I have to look down to do that. So I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to see. Um, I tell you what, our team is blowing it up, and I love, love, love. I want to give a shout out to our sexy business team. Um, Drew Bob, Crystal Troy, Bentley, they are all in the house. <laughs> they, they are working um, to help you have a great experience. Techie Meister, and he uh, he definitely helps us with our, with our techie issues and, and a lot more. He's incredible um, at doing the things that we need done and, and helping us get to a place that we need to get. Crystal's an amazing event coordinator. She's, she coordinates our tours and things. So I just want to like say that to you that, that we have, I'm a spoiled princess. That's what I should say <laughs> because I have, um, you have a great team. I have a great team. We should probably mention we're going to be doing the book to business tour. If anybody's interested, it's in Las Vegas and they want to come to, uh, it's actually on Halloween from one to three. We're doing a workshop on how to write and become an author. We all have a, secret, have a secret desire to become an author. Kim has written how many books? Four or five? I'm, I'm actually in the fifth one. Fifth one right now. And those are the books. I, I will say this. I didn't understand at first that a book was also, if you write a manual or a transcript, those are also books. They're just not a book that you put on a bookshelf for everybody to read. Uh -huh. So I don't know how many I've really written, but there are. I'm on my fifth one that's a book just to read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the fifth book is called, it's called Harriet. And it's how I learned I didn't have to do that anymore. And it is my story, but it also goes into a lot of other bats that I learned to overcome and, and be able to do what I do. Oh, I, th I think that is really the secret to your story. I mean, to, to come from such a, difficult childhood and then a difficult 13 year marriage. Um, and, and then to have so many other things happen in your life to be able to be where you are today and, and not carry, you don't carry any of the baggage. The, the, the baggage is, I mean, the, who you were then, so many people can take that and they wear it for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. And instead what you've done is turn it around and turn it into something authentic and fun and, uh, and, and you're helping a lot of people. So I think that's, that's a really important part of. And that's sexy. And that's very <laughs> sexy. And that's very sexy. So um, I think we're just about, we, anything you want to add before we take a break? Um, just how honored I am to be with you. I think you're an incredible leader and anyone who wants to learn about true leadership, um, you are definitely a leader to be teaching leaders. You're, you're an amazing, um, authentic leader who understands things and don't underestimate her. I will tell you that. Don't underestimate her little white hair <laughs> because she has absolutely done incredible thing it's rocking personally thank and you so i just appreciate being here thank you all righty well we're going to take a quick and next coming up is leslie appleton young i like to meet her she's talk about authentic she is one of the most authentic ladies that i know and just a really really 
super loved by the real estate industry around the country. Uh, she's very well known. She won two awards this year. She was the 2017 Inman's Real Estate Influencer. Inman's is a, a real estate publication. And then also another uh, real estate publication, Housewires, voted her 2017 woman. So we cannot wait to have her on mm -hmm. and talk. Coming on, she's not able to get on video. So we'll have a picture of her, but you'll be able to hear her. So we'll be back at 10 o'clock. Looking so forward to it. Bye. Bye-bye.